This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. I'm at Hylion. We're going to take a drive in the Hypertruck ERX. We're going to talk with Thomas Healy to get an update on where the company is, where the products are, and how this is all fitting into decarbonization, sustainability, and electric powertrain offerings for fleet. So come along and let's see what we can learn. Because we're in the hyper truck, which is full electric, full electric fueled with com yep. compressed natural gas. So, so a hybrid in, in, in theory, because you're fueling with natural gas, yep. it's getting put into a generator and produce an electric powertrain. But you were referring, you still offer a diesel hybrid where you can put the electric axle on a diesel. That is right. Cool. So we've got two different product lines the hybrid and the hyper truck ERX. Hybrid, it's a very large Toyota Prius, is the best way to think about <laughs> right. it. Your primary drive is still coming from the IC, but you can use that electric axle to apply torque and do regen braking. Then we have the hyper truck ERX, which is what we're in right now. Full electric drive right now, you're just running on the battery pack, and then it's got an onboard generator that can kick on and charge the batteries as it's going. And right. actually, about 30 seconds ago, the generator actually did kick on. Uh, and what's happening now is the generator is going through a warm-up cycle, and now it's actually starting to uh, to kick on, start producing horsepower, and start charging the batteries up. So, and just for product clarification, the diesel hybrid product i can put that on any truck that's a retrofit so any truck that i have i can right. turn it into a hybrid today right. and then the hyper truck we're sitting in this is a deal with peterbilt right so i go through you or i go through peterbilt and then how, do, how does that manufacturing process work so it's going through us today. okay uh, our long-term play as you look at this you know long vision is we want to be an on the line option for right at least be able to buy from any oem right uh to launch this product though we decided to team up with peterbilt launch it on uh, the peterbilt 570 chassis yep. uh, and this will be all the initial vehicles that we deliver but we'll evolve that business model as we go forward for sure right now fleet, we're working with the fleets as opposed to the OEM working with the fleets right okay so because so I put the order uh, through you and we're in Austin which isn't too far from Denton where Peterbilt's yep. manufacturing so it rolls off the line down there comes to you all you all fix it up into the hyper truck uh, hyper truck configuration and then I pick it up here right so that's that's how it'll launch it okay. right now where we're at in the development process is the vehicle we're in is a development unit, uh, but later this year we're going to start controlled fleet trials, which will actually be deployments in fleet operations oh, of cool. these trucks. That'll carry into 23. Okay. In 23, the things we need to check the box on are uh, CARB certification, EPA certification, as well as NHTSA. Uh, we'll get those done, and then that'll put us on track. In the latter part of 23, we'll go into production. With okay. This vehicle. Very cool. The, the noise we hear right now is the generator working. Still not as loud as a diesel. We're still having a normal conversation, so still not as uh, as loud as that. But so the I mean the truck is charging, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's an analogy, not not the reality, but an analogy is we basically got the extension cord with us and we're right. driving around. Right, right. Well, no, and you know, and I, and and Hylion has has been ahead of the game in a lot of this. I mean, you had your um, diesel hybrid. Uh, option out before anyone I, I think really close before anyone announced uh, an electric truck right and, right and now that that conversation in the industry has gained a lot of ground but you know so the idea of wrapping your head around okay well you don't have to necessarily worry about the infrastructure conversation charging the battery natural gas is a you know I mean that's the other kind of uh, challenge there's a it has a foothold people run natural gas I yeah. see natural gas uh, fueling stations but bringing that a little bit more to the market or, or knowing where to get your fuel would be the would be the challenge in running the truck yeah and so we've had a lot of fleets in and we're doing the ride and drives the number one issue we're hearing from fleets about adopting EV electric trucks is the infrastructure yeah they're getting a hundred little over 100 miles of range out of the current trucks that are on the market and they're finding that that suits a very small part of their their fleet that yep. can actually do that and then what they're seeing is, well, if I go to a much larger battery pack, I now need higher rate chargers, yep. which has substantial incremental costs, as yep. well as they're even finding that the grid can't even support that much charging. There's right. not enough capacity. Uh, we heard from a fleet who 
spec'd out a new warehouse, they went to their utility provider, they said, hey, how much electricity is available? Good, we can do electric trucks, this is great. They built the warehouse, they went back to say, all right, I'm ready to claim the electricity. Others had already taken it, and now they couldn't put uh, electric chargers into their, their new warehouse. So right. the excess capacity on the available on the grid is pretty limited, and that's right. where natural gas, over 700 stations already out there, pretty usually very easy to get to right off the highway type stations. And you can pull the truck in, 10 to 15 minutes, do a full top off or full refuel and then natural yep. gas, and then you're back out on the road. Right. Well, and you, you touched on application a little bit here because battery electric is still very niche. Long haul is still a question. And we're in a, a 579 Peterbilt, which is their flagship long haul yeah. truck. So can you tell me, how do you talk about range in this truck or I don't know, miles per whatever you're fueling yeah. in the natural gas? How do, how do you work that? So range of this vehicle is over a thousand miles uh, per refuel. Okay. And so it's basically like a diesel truck yep. in terms of, uh, of range. Now, the solution we're bringing to market first, it has a 75 mile EV range to it before the gen before the generator needs to kick on or before you need to start using natural gas. So the neat thing with that is, since it's 75 miles of EV range, we actually can qualify for ZEV credits. Both okay. the credits that the OEMs are gonna need as well as the proposed credits that the fleets are gonna start having mandated on them right. as well. Okay, um, and so it's been a while since I've talked about natural gas, so excuse me, but what's, what are the emissions like on, on natural gas? So you're, you can run in a city center 75 miles on purely the battery power on this truck. What are the, what are the emissions like from the natural gas when the generator's on? Yeah, so when the generator's off, you've got zero tailpipe emissions in EV truck, right? When the generator's on, you do have tailpipe emissions that are coming out, but when you actually look at well to wheel and the fact that a lot of fleets are using renewable natural gas uh, as opposed to just conventional natural gas, you can actually drive a below zero or net carbon negative emissions profile in the truck. So RNG, renewable natural gas, is basically the process of capturing methane coming off of landfills, dairy farms, yep. wastewater treatment plants, pump that into the pipelines and use that as your fuel in the truck. So it's taking what was going to be pollution and use that to actually drive a vehicle or charge a battery pack. And when you do that, you have the potential to get below zero emissions profiles. And then the next question people usually say is, well, what is renewable natural gas like one or 2% of the market? And the crazy stat is actually last year we surpassed that over 50% of the fuel sold at stations already came from renewable Okay, right, because the, any emissions I'm putting out at the tailpipe is less than the emissions that already existed that they were pulling the energy from. Exactly. Okay. All right, very cool. And another interesting stat on that one is even California found last year, even just using fracked natural gas, is actually has a lower carbon intensity score, a CI score, than grid electricity in California. Right. So even if you didn't have access to renewable natural gas, it's actually cleaner than the grid electricity. Right, right. Well, and I mean, that really, that is just so variable across your location, what utilities are available. I mean, even thinking about it from a consumer side in Ohio, I can select, you know, where I want my energy to come from. Not everyone has that choice and you're just kind of beholden to wherever you're getting that. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you try to do your part, but how do you control that, to your point, the well to wheel, right? How can you mitigate that as much as possible? And then it will also come down to cost, right? If you go to your utility provider and you say, hey, I want all this come from wind and solar, they're gonna charge you more for that, yep. right? The nice thing with renewable natural gas, natural gas is that we're finding fleets can go buy a gallon of natural gas at a station if they have a contract with the station for about a dollar a gallon. Right. So today, yeah. Two months ago when we were having this conversation, <laughs> show was that diesel prices three, three fifty today. Yeah. Who knows where they I actually know. are? Holy <laughs> moly! Dollar seven in California. <laughs> is that what they're up to now? Close to it. Wow. So, but natural gas has stayed pretty yeah. steady in terms of pricing at yeah. the station. Yeah. And the reason for that is, is that um, a lot of the cost with actually buying natural gas to charge or to fuel up your truck is actually in compressing the gas. Is yeah. where a lot of the cost is. 
So the actual commodity in natural gas is not a big percentage of that dollar that you spend. So even if natural gas prices fluctuate, we don't see as big of a fluctuation on the actual uh, cost of fueling of the truck. Right. Tell me about the EXL technology. What are you using here and, and yeah. what are some of the, the cool innards of it? Yeah, so we've got the Meritor 14XE okay. axles on this truck, dual axles. Uh, they are two-speed, so uh, I don't know if you had noticed, but around 25, 30 miles an hour, uh, the axles would actually shift. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that we've done, uh, which we think is pretty unique, is we actually independently shift the axles. So while one is shifting, the other is still applying torque, and then when the other one's shifting, the other axle's applying torque. So you never fully lose the acceleration of the vehicle. Unlike a diesel truck, when you go to shift from six to seven gear, right. you lose all your power. The cab rocks back down. You know, you get that's why you get this shaking motion in the cab right. in a diesel. Versus in here, you don't get any of that because the electric axles are shifting independently. Okay. Did you say that's something that you're you're doing and controlling on the power management that's side? Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting because I, you know, the conversations about. I mean, the Meritor axle. It's, it's popular in the industry. You're seeing it on a lot of nameplates but understanding uh the role of integration uh you know in the in the ev world is interesting how much you can tweak and impact the operation so you have a good amount of control over that then we do and with that though it's absolutely done in a collaboration with meritor who now is going to be coming to right. uh you know we worked closely with their engineering team to see what uh parameters they had set on the axles right. and then we work within those but do you know our best to make sure that you've got that smooth acceleration like all the the controls of when you step on that pedal how much torque that's all being developed by Hylion we're just working within the bounds of what the axles can do right right and you still have a, a partnership or a relationship with Dana and that there are, that axle is in use is that more on the diesel hybrid product side correct so okay. the hybrid both on a diesel truck and or on a CNG truck as oh, well okay. Uh, we're using the, the Dana axle uh, motor attached to it in order to assist that vehicle with power. Okay, so the uh, just for yeah. clarification <laughs> on my side, the, the Dana hybrid CNG, that's on an existing CNG truck that you're retrofitting. Correct, and the okay. push from the industry has been uh, many CNG trucks, drivers feel as though they're underpowered, they don't perform like a mm. diesel truck. Obviously this isn't that way because this is electric drive, right? But the hybrid, what we've found is customers want us to put that hybrid system on that e-axle that has 120 horsepower right. as a way to make a, CNG, a conventional CNG truck perform a little bit more like a diesel does. Right, right. Well, and, and uh, I know the diesel hybrid product has been, you've been showing it off for quite a while. Remind me on some of the fuel efficiency benefits of this. What is, what is the real ROI on that? Yeah, so it depends on where you're running the vehicles, right? So if you're in very hilly terrain areas, that's where you're gonna see the best savings because we can capture that wasted energy. I see. Um, and then the other aspect is you're, you're gonna use that as an APU. Uh, so when the driver's sleeping in the cab, they can actually turn the engine off, run all the air conditioning off of our high voltage cooling system to produce AC. Now, when you go to install it on a CNG truck, though, it's not about fuel economy performance. It's about giving that driver that extra horsepower, that extra torque. For sure. And when you were in the shop, you actually saw uh, both hybrid systems being installed. There were some diesel trucks and there were some oh, okay. CNG trucks. Uh, I think we're going to have you drive now. Oh. So, uh, very similar to your diesel truck, uh, release the parking brake or uh, air brakes here. And then to sh shift our system into drive, you just hit the D there. Okay. Good. Ready to go. Now, I, I mean, I did mention I grew up dri driving a Camaro, and yeah. we just had the launch of this one. So. <laughs> well, feel free. It's, uh, yeah, no, it, the thing is uh, a lot of fun under acceleration. So, and the, is the compressor still going? Is it charging now? So the air compressor is running. Oh, okay. Now the reason for that is because when you release the air brakes, it yeah. depletes the tank some. So now we're charging it up. That's the air compressor turning off and you're in full electric drive mode right okay. now. And you mentioned earlier, I can control the regenerative brake power up here, right? That's correct. I mean, so if I really want, you just touch it and it changes it, right? Yeah, okay. if you go into high with bobtailing, if you let off and it goes full regen, it'll chirp. Now, okay. you're welcome to do that. We've, you know, it's, uh, that it's not, it doesn't I damage the vehicle <laughs> at all. It's just, uh, yeah, your tire costs go up. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then if you hit it into low, you'll see it's okay, just I'll, less regen. I'll do that. Here. All right, so low test. 
Okay. So still a little bit of drag, but not as yeah, much as higher levels. For sure. And one thing I noticed too is that um, let's see how this goes. The regenerative braking sometimes, and that one comes down really pretty good, really pretty quick. Yeah. Will you're it go in medium to, now? Yeah. Will it go to full stop? or will it just so the last roll. couple of miles an hour you will need yeah. to hit the physical brakes okay and that seems to be pretty standard across a lot of regen braking because you don't right. want to you want to keep generating yeah. as much as possible really right? just yeah. to hold it you can kind of glide to a stop but it's, it's really holding the vehicle yeah because i found i mean uh when i've done some of these uh, test drives even on the more medium duty uh ones feel free to keep looping um yeah I'll, I'll do another one um i would stop like a car's length before I really wanted to. Yeah. Yep. To get you know, getting used to that. Well, and, and that's and that's one of those integration points, right? So right. you know how you tune the pedal. Um, there's a lot of skill in that, and how smooth it is, um, how you know easy to control the vehicle. And it goes. It goes. You know, it's been amazing to watch that evolution. You look at something like a diesel with an AMT, right? Which, mm -hmm. were, which are really pretty good and you don't feel a lot of the load and it takes a lot of that strain off, but this is just another level. You're driving a full EV. And you should do another lap and, uh, you know, come to a dead stop at the, the end back there and just floor it, just so you can see, uh, oh, right. you know, the full vehicle All right, you're really trying, yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is documentation that I was instructed to do this. Yeah. So I'm sure, I know I signed something coming here, but I'm sure, I wonder if this releases me from liability. No, this is really, really cool. And you said a thousand miles in range on a CNG fill up. Correct, so yep. That's that's pretty excellent. Which, I mean, now you're basically taking what is an electric truck and moving it into having the performance characteristics from a range standpoint of a diesel. Right. And what we found is many fleets, if you're driving 500 miles a day, you're going to pass a few stations along your route, right, with that network of 700 stations. Right. Uh, obviously, it takes a little more planning than a, uh, a diesel truck does, right? I mean, diesel, you can stop almost anywhere. Right. but comparing it to the natural get or the uh comparing it to the electric infrastructure out there for charging right. semi trucks it's uh far far superior right well or even i mean in this application we're talking long haul and a lot of i mean you know 579 there is no infrastructure right it doesn't I mean, exist hydrogen isn't a thing right uh and battery electric isn't everyone the industry has figured out as to your point earlier it's not ready for battery electric right? right it might be 15 years away 20 years away before batteries are even i mean they say battery technology moves quickly but um but honestly the battery technology mm -hmm. will surpass the infrastructure capabilities yeah. so right. we'll have mm -hmm. batteries that can drive you 500 miles we'll have batteries that are way less but the problem is there's not going to be a grid able to charge them right well and then i mean when it even in even how how far do you or how far out do you see you got a 75 mile pure electric range right mm -hmm. now i mean give me another 40 miles and you're kind of up into where a full battery electric truck is running right now like how far off do you see that how, how far battery com batteries come already since you've been doing this so what we've actually found is batteries are not our weak point in the equation anymore right like if for a bev plug-in truck batteries are absolutely absolutely the weak point today and infrastructure is the weak point as well today, but I think it's gonna be the main weak point in the future or pain point in the future. With this, battery, the batteries we have today are plenty good. We don't need evolution in them anymore. What we're actually working on is how do we keep on evolving the generator to be more efficient in producing the electricity? Because if we can keep on making that more and more efficient, that will increase your range on the same size of tanks. Okay. Okay, I see. Um, where are you, uh, where are you sourcing your generator from? Is this your, uh, where do you get that from? Cause, and is it comparable to, so, you know, for example, Cummins announced a fuel agnostic engine platform. Would that be something that fleets could put in here on a CNG engine or is it a separate, is this a completely different beast? So this truck is a IC engine within a electric motor hooked to the river. We have not announced the, the maker of the engine, but it's a natural gas engine. Okay. Uh, so that's this truck, you know, it's basically a conventional engine, more or less, uh, that runs on natural gas. Okay. What we've put on our roadmap though is, while we're using an ICE engine today, 
we're gonna move to a fuel agnostic and then to a fuel cell. Now, our fuel agnostic is not a ICE fuel agnostic like some of the other announcements out there. It's actually a non-internal combustion engine that can run on various fuel types. Uh, and so when you do that, it really you know is a, a another leap forward because now you can offer to a fleet Hey, the same truck could run on that gas or it could run on hydrogen and it really gives fleets flexibility then we see the the long-term solution being fuel cells uh but in order to get to there you do need that infrastructure built out so we kind of see fuel cells as it will start in local deployments regional type applications and then whenever hydrogen stations do get built out then it could be an application for over the road okay so do you so then i mean do you really see yourselves as an integrator or powertrain management company you know what i mean yeah. like the evolution of highland if it's not you know what's driving you know because you can like you said you can swap out that that power plant right so to speak so how do you i mean how do you how do you define yourselves in that kind of new future yeah so i think our our roadmap evolves or what we are as a company evolves so today all the software integration on this vehicle is done by highland okay the battery technology, you saw our battery yep. room. We also uh, make our own battery modules. So that's a core part of what we do. We see that we'll expand to more aspects of the vehicle as well. So, or of the powertrain, I should say. Right. So for instance, the generator, that fuel agnostic generator, that is something that, you know, Hylion is, uh, is working on. Okay. And so we see that as a way that we can take over another component of the vehicle. Right, okay, very cool. Yeah, okay, all right. so, you so see I should the really it? Yeah, go for it. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs>